I think looking at other artists' pieces is incredibly important for an artist. To the point where it may be more important than looking at photos or studying reality. It proved again and again that whenever I study the pieces of someone, of some artist that I'm really inspired by, is just so much more useful, so much more productive. Because learning visual arts is pretty much learning a language. And no matter how many times I look at an apple, I'll never learn how to call apple in Japanese. It's just not gonna happen. You have to learn for someone who is already doing it. I think it's pretty crucial because one thing you need to be looking at when you are studying other artists, you need to try and break down what exactly is it about it that makes it so appealing to you. Because what's interesting, uh, I think anyone can tell, especially if you're in the digital art, maybe concept artist kind of direction, we're all kind of inspired by making things realistic. Realism is like this big thing. We'll look at some artwork and when it's just looks real, it's incredibly impressive to us. And that's what gets us started. That's what gets us very into wanting to create something like this. But right now, when I'm looking at something like this, while it's an amazing piece on its own, it's not that inspiring to me right now as it used to be maybe. Because I can see how this is pretty much kind of a copy of a photo. While still a lot of work done with the values, with the brushwork that just doesn't exist in a photo, even if it was made from a photo. But I, I think it's guaranteed that this is a, a photocopy, more or less, like photos were involved. Still, when you look at a different piece where obviously it's not a copy of a photo, yet still realistic, this is something that's really inspiring usually. This looks serious, interesting, like all these amazing ideas that we're so inspired with, they will probably really look cool when they're so realistic. But I feel like that's like the first stage of your art path. And with time, you should start appreciating certain ways of simplification that surprisingly, when you learn that you like them, you understand that, yeah, it's not exactly the realism that you like. There's more to it. It's about a certain translation of realism into something that gives you a hint of what kind of sense the human made out of this reality. And that's exactly that extra thing that makes us so captivated by certain pieces and something that really makes us want to get back to it more and more and maybe repeat as well. Hi guys, my name is Borodante and today I just wanted to talk about my collection of inspirational pieces that I assembled over the years. It evolved a lot and uh, if I sort of sorted from old to new, I can see certain changes and that's kind of interesting. And yeah, I just wanted to talk about like what exactly I see in the pieces that I save and why I save them. So let's talk about that. This video has a sponsor, Wing Fox, and they have this new course called Drawing a Gookeen Performer by Overlapping Black and White Colors in Photoshop which of course means the creation of this illustration by starting in black and white and then colorizing it. So I actually found it quite interesting, first of all, because it uses different brushwork to have this gentle, soft look of the skin. But of course, the most interesting part is exactly how this artist makes an initially black and white artwork I wouldn't say exactly like right away that, oh, this is a colorized black and white artwork, you know? I noticed that there was one interesting moment where a black and white version worked with basic values with like main light. And this is just colorized version on top of black and white. But the final version, you can see how the lighting from the bottom, this very colorful, bright, like reflected light from the bottom that adds this magic feeling to the portrait. It was added later. 
So that's an interesting thing. I think it's really interesting to see what they have to say and what other approaches they include in their workflow. So if any of you guys are interested, the affiliate link is in the video description. You're gonna get the course for just $9 right now since it's in the early birds fundraising stage. So you get the full access to the course when it starts coming out, when it's translated. And also in the description, there's a link to the Black Friday event on Wing Fox. That's still going on apparently. It seems like everywhere it's like a black month now. But yeah, don't forget your 30% discount code. And on the Black Friday deals page, you get up to 70% discounts. So make sure to check it out. There's a lot of cool courses going on here. Now back to the video. So yeah, my latest and greatest inspiration is about shapes. Whenever I see clean shapes, like if you get as clean as possible, in terms of like specifically dictating certain shapes, angles, and that's it, while still having like at a glimpse a photorealistic effect, that's like my number one priority. You're my favorite artist if you can do that. Because I find this kind of look, if not the most beautiful thing at all, it's at least the most useful for me professionally. I feel like this is giving me these like keys to understanding how to translate reality into artwork. Because from here, if you wanna have like an incredibly photorealistic, hyper detailed look, just add tiny details on the like edges of these, uh, you know, pieces and everything. And what's also interesting, and in here we can see as well, for photorealism, they apply clean big shapes but also introduce almost like disconnected of wrong scale and quality textures enclosed inside of these shapes. And that's like such a huge deal. Look at these like weird, like fuzzy almost lines in here. It's, it's texture, it's not actual details. They sort of imply the nature of the surface, but you don't have to think too much about it. And somehow it just works so well. I noticed uh, this kind of approach in many pieces lately. And it's like a quick thing. And that's, again, like the quicker the artwork, the more impressed I am. Like this piece. We can see pretty specific and sharp silhouettes of these trees. But inside of them, there's a super fuzzy, mushy brushwork of textures. Almost like there's a black silhouette as a like a separate layer piece that was made like in just black color for all all of this uh, mass of trees and then the transparency was locked and there was used like some kind of spray or very mushy texturized brush and it was just uh, put all over the place it sort of gives us the feeling of um like photography with long exposure plus flash where we have like certain fuzzy details but high contrast stuff gets very sharp and clean and it sort of gets disconnected a little bit. Brighter details are sharper, like whenever there's strong contrast we have very specific and sharp details but whenever there's the slower contrast it just switches to the mode of texture. So there are silhouettes and textures and nothing else, no actual geometry work in here. Silhouettes and textures and that's it. Like this whole rock in here, pretty big specific shape probably, but it just doesn't matter. It was defined in such a quick fashion. Almost just a texture, some kind of vague shadow in here, but nothing specific. Just a huge dance of just abstraction, but a clean, like sharp edge. This is a very interesting thing. And I keep saving this kind of pieces to just memorize it and uh, look through it sometimes to keep in mind that maybe this is the way to build your artwork and maybe this is the way to achieve what you're looking for the easiest, the quickest and best way possible. And yeah, in here it's interesting how the whole reality was sort of transformed into these simple shapes, like almost low poly reality, but it's also like ray traced almost like an RTX mode of Quake 2 game or something like that. Like really, even like the, these pots, they're like literally low polygon or something. But this incredible lighting everywhere really gives you this interesting look. And of course, it's just about beautiful dance of colors and shapes everywhere. I think it's looking really cool. So it's like a series of these pieces with a little dog. 
hanging around. And yeah, and here we have some kind of really funny looking cars and everything. But again, like this dance of shapes is so cool and interesting. And it's always like simplified shapes, but with something very realistic sprinkled on top of it, you know? It's usually like the colors. While they're kind of bright, they're just made very realistic. If we sort of apply some kind of filter of like ocean ripples or something, you know, where shapes will just dissolve. I feel like people wouldn't even uh, tell that this is actually a drawing. It, it can be like the combination of colors and contrast is really like photorealistic. And also if we look into textures, right, they're also applied uh, very like realistic way with all this grain and everything. So this is an interesting way to do it. You play around with a shape. It's like this big deal. Apparently shapes are something you really should simplify always. And I wonder if it's like a trendy thing to go in this generation or something, or is it always gonna be like that? It's just what I noticed lately, like modern artwork became just much more proud of being simplified. And if we look at some kind of like older style artwork or something, like something classical, you know, just classically beautiful, it's all super realistic. You don't see these, you know, specific bold shapes that are like intentionally like in your face, like, look at this. These are the simple shapes, but you still like it. That's the kind of thing that you really see in modern pieces that are really cool. In here, we don't see that. But if you really look at it, it's really also a combination of simple shapes. And they're very intentional and clean. And, you know, they have certain direction and expression in everything, like certain angles, certain things. They really dictate certain mood and direction. So that whole boring thing that all the good artists keep repeating about shape design and gesture and everything, it's all there. And what I really like about this modern style of simplifying shapes on everything is that it's almost like a tutorial. <laughs> the whole art style like this, it's a tutorial about how to make things look awesome. Even if you don't want to go this simplified, although I honestly don't mind actually painting like this. It's just, you really can learn a lot from this art style. And this piece is always like blowing me away. This is incredible. It looks like a photo, but is just so incredibly perfect. <laughs> Just such a beautiful play of contrast and photorealistic textures. And this dance of shapes is just incredible. And what's most interesting, like, uh, I don't have the original photo that the artist used or anything. But I think if there's a photo, it's not at all as simple as this. Like, not even close. You know, they did a lot of brain work to find these simple, like, circular flow shapes to make it all look so satisfying and clean. It's not at all like that in the original photo. But guess what? You don't have to repeat all of that tiny, meaningless mess to still make it look like a photo and actually make it look a lot more satisfying, beautiful, and worth your attention. And yeah, when we go more classical, a lot of the times, you know, this shape work becomes a bit more, like, a bit smaller, and it sort of blends into the whole brushwork idea. So in this case, we just look at this piece and, like, it's just so lovely to look at. Like, you know exactly why this was made and why it's worth your attention, because it's just such a lovely, such nice and gentle dance of these layers of snow on the, on the trees and how they're glowing beautifully. This beautiful glow and shape design of just like, just such a nice flow down going on in such a beautiful dance of uh, reflected lighting and, uh, you know, overexposed sunlight. So it looks incredible, like, you play around with certain combinations and find meaning in it. And of course, next time you look at reality, you go and look for something that would work as a combination. Like, you look at reality and you think about, wow, this looks beautiful, but why, you know? Same as I was looking at this piece right now, like, it looks incredible, but why? What exactly is making it so cool? And of course, a lot of pieces that are not new at all, but still the most incredible dance of shapes and contrast and shapes that just transform into textures. 
This is like one of the most complex pieces I've seen. It's like Art Nouveau style or something. I'm like super illiterate about like, you know, styles and names of artists and, um, you know, the history of art or anything. I, I looked through it, but I never memorized anything because I know it's not actually useful to me. Not applicable, but uh, nonetheless, it doesn't, uh, you know, prevent me from appreciating the hell out of it. This is just incredibly beautiful to me. It's interesting how in here it's almost like the most important parts of the image are the lowest contrast ones. Like the highest contrast in here is just kind of a mess, like some kind of flowers or something and in here is something like I can't even tell what this is. <laughs> but it's just so beautiful. It's just such a stylish thing. The shapes, the colors and everything. And then a much softer contrast on this person and well while this man in here is obviously wearing a very high contrast outfit still the background behind them is very soft like there's a zone of rest right there's low contrast around them and in here as well low contrast around the person so even though there's a lot of high contrast thing in here it's all sort of uniform so on a greater scale this is the high contrast and this is the low contrast that's why when you guys sometimes send me on for an overpaint and you use like an outline to support the, you know, the shape of your character. And I always say like outline is not enough because if you zoom out, that outline disappears and it's still a low contrast spot. So things need to be like bigger, much bigger in terms of change the whole part of the background or the lighting, make the character darker or brighter overall. Things need to be really naturally different from each other if you want to, you know, attach the viewer's attention to that. So yeah, you can just look through pieces that you enjoy and just keep analyzing them. The beautiful shape design and Dishonored uh, concept art. This is not Pyotr Yablonsky even, as far as I know. It's some other artist and they did an incredible job of this, I don't know, assassin mage or something. I never played Dishonored 2 even. But this is looking incredible, like such a beautiful like shape. And it's just about poses. It's such strong poses. And it just makes everything work as one thing together and like this is just concept art now it's not the full composition with the backgrounds and everything yet we still can appreciate it as much so yeah if any of you guys want to know maybe the name of some artists that i mentioned that i forgot to write in the editing like uh, their names Feel free to ask me in the comments, uh, I'll tell you, because uh, like if you saw just a tiny thumbnail and you're interested. Yeah, this kind of artwork, it's always amazing to see a strong silhouette with this clean shape and then very realistic texture going on. And also this ultra soft lighting, like overcast, but also there is a lot of trees around you or something like it's soft from the top kind of thing looks beautiful it's kind of a studio lighting thing as well but yeah it's interesting how it's always a good idea to generally go realistic but also just simplify one of the things and here we have the simplified shape we have like a very striking readable thing going on and it's actually while there's beautiful lighting and rendering of materials and details inside going on Really, it almost doesn't matter. It would still be a cool picture, even if it would be a lot more mushy in here. <laughs> because of just such a strong, beautiful shape and generally the very satisfying dance of colors going on. Another example of like shapes and then pretty much completely disconnected textures inside of them. This is such an interesting aspect to me lately. Look at this, like some kind of uh, flower or I don't know, bush growing in here and all the details inside are drawn only intentionally with a very fuzzy like pepper spray brush. Not a single outline inside of the shape. And almost everything is pretty much painted that way. Shapes are only defined on like silhouettes and then inside is just a bunch of texture. And here there's a little bit going on. Like certain accent moments is one thing accents you can always work through and detail them with light and shadow but what's interesting is how do you approach everything else look at that 
that's totally working. <laughs> And you're almost like happy that it's not the way this is because, you know, that's an edge of an image. You want to see something going a bit weird where things shouldn't be perfectly defined. The loss of details in right places, it sort of brings the feeling of meaning. Like if this is fuzzy, then the fact that this is sharp means something. And this is just huge, very inspiring and interesting. Yeah, this is, uh, I think, the latest piece from Ron Ja. And Ron Ja, I, I used to look at his pieces absolutely differently. Like, it was always, like, about the lighting. I loved the lighting. Later, I loved the, like, texture and uh, brushwork. And the brushwork is still this incredibly weird thing where if you zoom in even now, even though this is just saved from Twitter, you can see it just scribbles sometimes. It's just scribbling everywhere to apply a certain look to the thing. Even though, like, this is like a glossy material or whatever, right? So it's supposed to be, like, smooth. And it looks very smooth and shiny and all. Yet it was defined with these scribbles and it gives this beautiful, vibrant dance of details. I love how Ronja just redefines what it means to have a striking detail. His detail is like the most striking. Like, look at those lips. They're like, they're not just detailed. They're almost like overly sharp or something. And on the nose also, there's certain dance of brushwork that's like almost black and white sometimes or something. That's what makes it look so incredibly present and sharp. Like this hand is just, wow, look at that. Like it's an unbelievable. It's literally sometimes just black and white, incredibly sharp. That's how it looks so specific. And the only reason why it still works is because the brushwork is incredibly tiny with these super strong colors. Because if you compare to any other artwork, like classical artwork, right, with uh, like normal brushwork, in here, here's a hand. It's also shiny. This girl is like in water. The face is kind of wet as well. The hair right there, probably perfect example, also black and shiny. They're kind of the same shininess, but this is just so much more sharp and specific because in here the brushwork is bigger and when the brushwork is bigger you sort of have to like combine this highlight moment and this no highlight moment right next to it and make just one average color brushstroke on top of all of it because you sort of simplify and smooth out things like that. That's why nothing is as bright or as dark as in here. So in here, we sort of have this nano brushwork where things are literally one pixel brush. And many people tell me like, uh, yeah, you're inspired by Ron Jia, but you have to understand he makes his pieces for like six months and they're incredibly huge resolution, like 10,000 pixels and he's using a tiny brush. Yeah, I understand all of that. And that's just a cool note about how to work with texture. It's the work with materials and rendering the details of your surfaces. It's one thing, he doesn't build the artwork with one pixel brush. It still builds up with uh, simplified shapes and everything and looking for certain things. Maybe he doesn't build like specific triangles to show that brave simplified shape design and everything, but he still thinks through that. But what's incredible about his artwork in the end is just the striking detail and most importantly what that detail is built upon. It's built upon incredibly like impeccable understanding of geometry. You can only render the face like that when you know absolutely perfectly where every single pixel of this face is looking at, like the direction of surface. He knows exactly what he's doing, like exactly the shape he's working on. That's why he can play around with the shape with the texture and lighting and color and detail so much because there's impeccable understanding of geometry. So yeah, I guess this is it. Just wanted to make a little talk like that about what I see in other people's artwork. Like that really inspires me. Some of them are like weird snippets and bits of artwork like this. I, I find this super incredible. I'm not even sure if it's like useful, but it's just mesmerizing how brushwork can work like this. It's like the whole new world inside of just these stretchings of colors and oil paint. 
But you guys, tell me what you think, what inspires you, what you found maybe useful about what I said. And for now, this is it. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Look at that. It's like, I can do whatever I want and you will still enjoy it. Here's a perfectly hard circular eraser stroke. What a bold move. <laughs>